Hello, this is Tan Lee, founder of 3D Cat Masters. Today I want to show you how to make a cone Lego compatible shape. Already, as you can see, I created a name here with this uh, simple description. You should do that. We wait for you. Okay. On the left hand side, you see model tree. Right, top, and front planes are highlighted in a workspace. Up here, you see this big button here. All right, if you hover your mouse, it says is extrude with a keyboard shortcut of letter X, as in Xerox. It creates 3D dimensional geometry. Okay, select it, and let's click on the top plane. When you do that, you should have this plane oriented parallel to the screen. If not, click on Sketch View. And if it's out of your screen, click refit. Are you with me? Okay. Uh, I'm going to create a cylinder. Select circle once, left click at the origin, drag the mouse. Left click. Oh, my mouse not clicking. You can click select to leave this choice or middle click double click this number type my one minus one divide by 16 click ok or middle click chain the depth to 0 0.75 up here or you can do it here you can enter 3 over 4 which is the same thing as 0 0.75 on an inch. Click OK or middle click. All right. Control D or press this button and choose default orientation. Now, sometimes the edge may be jagged. To fix that, you go to File, go to Prepare, Model Properties, go to Accuracy here, and replace this 39 with 1. Okay, regenerate, close, there you go, much better. So here's a cylinder, we're gonna chamfer. You're gonna use type D1 by D2, click on this upper edge, circular edge. Okay, and rotate to look at directly if you like. Drag one of them down after you see a blue bubble the upper one will have a light leg between here and here the leg length is 5 over 32 okay this one is 5 over 8 of an inch we are using inches as a unit all right there we have a cone we're going to rotate it to the bottom select shell click the bottom face double click here or change the thickness in here either way double click there 0 0.052 of an inch click ok rotate back up or press ctrl d got it we can wait for you or you can hit pause when you're ready play it again all right next up I click X or extrude, select the top face, circle again, click here, drag the mouse, middle click, or select, select, or click on select. That is the diameter of a circle with a symbol of a circle and a slash, double click it. Type 0 0.190 for the diameter. Enter. This is the location in the X direction. Type 5 over 32. Same thing with this one. Or the vertical location. Notice that it's going to put it over the edge a little bit. That's okay. Rotate it or press Control D. Got it? Control D is in David which is the same thing as this default orientation. Click OK. 
And here comes the height. Zoom out a little bit so you can see the depth. You can change it here or here. Okay. Double click here. 0 0.078 of an inch. Enter. I always press enter after you type the number. Please remember that. Click OK. And I need three more. I'm going to click on the extrude one here. I'm going to rename this one to stud. And this one is cylinder. OK. Oh, let's stick out the number four. All right. I select the stud, click pattern. Choose a type to axis. And if you don't see an axis in there, that because you did not check this one. Sometimes it's not checked off. You just select it. Notice if I uncheck it, you don't see it. Okay, check it again. There it is. Click this button. Select that axis. And by default, it gives you four members around the axis at 90 degrees apart between two members. Okay. We accept those defaults and there they are okay we'll clean up those later on all right any question guys easy does it we're going to put the cross at the top extrude select that face notice just move slowly and click sometimes you move and click at the same time it will not work Okay, it flashes with a green color. It means that surface is selected. Now I'm going to use palette here. Click on shape. Let's see if this works. You drag the cross in there. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, maybe it's my mouse. Let me try different profiles. Nope, doesn't work there either. All right. In this case, we're going to make this. We can use um, actually, I'm going to use center rectangle. And it's going to be the width is 1 over 16. And the Height is going to be 0 0.190, which is the same as the diameter of the stud, if you remember that. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Well, that's fine. We're just going to do one of it and we're going to pattern it. Click OK. And this time we're going to remove material. Select it now as if it points away from the surface, which is okay. We need to flip it. You can click it here. Now the direction means that's where it's gonna cut. Okay, now it's gonna cut inside the rectangle. In this case, it's gonna cut away from it, away from the surface. So we want to flip it. Okay, there you go. And we'll click okay. I'm going to take this one and pattern it just like we did to the stud. That way we guys have some more practice on pattern with axis. Okay. Choose axis again. And notice it appears, but it will reappear after you finish it. So we're going to zoom in and select that axis there. Again, if you don't see it, check on this box. Okay. Keep the same default. Now be careful here. We're going to flip it. We just want, now let's see what it does here. Does it work? I guess so. All right, let's should do it. There you go. There's the cross. All right, and we're going to take a look at it from the bottom and see what we should do next. I think we're going to put it in the tubes, okay? All right, we're going to. Select that phase to extrude. First, pick up the tool, extrude, click that face there. And again, if you don't see 
um, the orientation like I do. You click on sketch view or refit, okay? You use these two buttons frequently, okay? Because if you if you sketch when the view is distorted, you don't get a true geometry of the sketch, okay? All right, now let's see. Where should it to be? It should be behind the studs. I want to click on this button here to turn on hidden line. There we go. So I see the studs appearing in gray color. Select circle. Move the mouse to the center of the stud or circle. Click it and draw. Try not to snap anything as you drag it out. Left click, come back to the same center, draw another one. Be careful every any thing that might snap. Okay, this is a tangent. We don't want that to be tangent here, so we select it. Depending on your case, so delete any unwanted constraints. Okay, now you should have two diameters. Double click one of them. And the other one should be about the size of the stud diameter. Okay, again, if you don't see this, just pause, rewind it, try again. Okay, and it's the first ring of the tube in the bottom or inside of the cone. Let's switch to shading with edges. You can use Control 2, number 2, and click OK, and see what happens. All right, notice that it protrudes outside. We'll clean it up later. If we drag the yellow dot, my design should touch um, or flush with the surface here. Drop this one down, choose the one with a red line. Let's say two reference, select it. Move your mouse over the rim surface there, click once, okay, and it turns to those two colors. Okay, now let's rotate to the side. You see that? You guys got it? Pretty easy, right? Again, just pause the video, rewind it, and do it again. Thank you. Click OK. And guess what we're going to do next? Yes, we're going to pattern that tube. All right, we're going to rename that one. Let's call it tube. Click pattern. Chain to axis. Look for the axis, the same axis. It's hard to see, but you move your mouse, it should highlight in an orange color. Orange color means pre highlighted or pre selected. Once you click on it, it turns to green quickly. And here's the default number of four and 90 degrees apart. Looks good to me. There it is. Okay. All right, by design, the tubes here are going to be weak. So Lego adds a uh, support between the tubes. Click Extrude, select that top face again, or under face, rather. And here's a cool trick. I want to use Line and kind of move your mouse to somewhere here that is catches the middle point. Go to the other side, let it snap. Okay, middle click to exit. Now, why do we have it just a single line? I'll show you in a minute. Click OK. Okay, now we're not going to remove material. We'll unclick that one. If it's, yeah, oh, well, actually, it was, okay, good. We're not removing material, okay? And then we're going to do this trick here. Thicken the sketch, sketch, thicken the sketch, I need to say, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. And zoom in closely, you see that that line there, okay, is what I sketched. If I click it again, again, notice, notice there are three modes. Let's give it a little bit more thickness. I'm going to try, let's try 5 over 32.
No, it should be no, it should be the shell thickness. Sorry, five two. Yeah, shell thickness. All right, now I'm gonna flip this again or toggle this one rather. Okay, that's better. Okay. Now if I turn a little bit, you see the thickness being that shallow. I'm gonna drag this yellow dot up higher. Let's stay at a quarter of an inch or 0 0.25 of an inch. Click OK. Okay, there it is. Let's rename that one to support. Okay. All right, select it, and guess what? We got a pattern. You got it. Select that one, choose axis again. This is the third time we pattern with axis, guys, so you should be good by now. Find what? Anyone? Find the axis, right? Default is four, right? We got one, two, three, four. At what? Nine degrees apart. You got it. Click OK. There you go. Okay, now the tubes are stronger than before. All right. What else should we do? Ah, we need to create the slots for the studs of the um, adjacent uh, Lego brick or plate. All right, this is the trickiest one. Let's see how we should do this guy. Any suggestions? Anyone? Pause the video and think about it. I clicked on extrude, select that bottom rim surface there. Okay, the slot should phase at about 45 degrees. So I'm gonna use a center line go to the center here, drag it somewhere here, it doesn't matter. Middle click, and that's the angle. I'm gonna type 45, press enter, okay? All right, now I'm gonna use a cool tool. Uh, it's slanted rectangle. If you click this one, it's the second choice. And carefully click here, drag across the center line, uh, into it so that it is perpendicular and keep dragging until you see another symbol. There you go. See that? A symbol there is for symmetry. You click it and you drag it either that way or this way. It doesn't matter. What I want to do is I want to cross it between the, the um, inside um, shell rather and the outside of the tube. Because we want to cut it. Oh, that doesn't seem so bad. All right, let's do it again. My mouse is finicky. Click here. Left click there. And middle click to escape. Watch the when I middle click, this will jump over here. Or this will become um, unselected. And this will be selected. You see that? Okay. Or just click on this one. I just like to middle click while I'm here. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna we're gonna cut it here, so it doesn't matter how big it is. So let's see. Actually, we need to move this guy. Um, let's let's fix the length of this one. All right. So select uh, dimension. Click on click on that line. Middle click here. Zero point two five. Okay, remember that number? That number is the outer diameter of the tube. The inside is 0.19, which is the same size as the stud's diameter. Okay, good job, guys. Any questions? All right, now we're gonna, um, I think it's good there. I don't have to bring it in there because it's gonna cut here, okay? That gives you a, uh, a clearance for the stud from another brick to sit in there. You see that in a second here. All right. Click OK. And then by default, it always adds a protrusion. We want to cut this time. So we will click on Remove Material. And remember the direction of the arrows? 
it should be down word or if, click on that arrow and how thick is that think about it if the stud has to be under that it has to be greater than the studs height which was what is it point seventy eight right um we're gonna round it up to eighty click OK there we go so the stud will be under that slot you with me all right let's uh, rename this one to slot and we're gonna pattern now you can move over here after you select it or it's, it gives you this convenient menu so you can click right here and change to uh, axis click on that guy there again all right and by default it gives you four now just for fun you can type in eight okay and then you have to click this one to give an equal angular spacing between two but with eight members okay now we're not going to do that this time but just want to give you an example you can change the members um characteristics i can uncheck this again that gives you 90 degrees again of course you can change that to any degree you want well now we're just going to keep the default all right click ok and there you go okay last but not least we're going to clean up this protrusion and the excess of the studs okay now we're going to give uh, you a uh, five seconds to think how we're going to clean this up anyone any volunteer? A three, a two, a one. Time's up. All right, this one actually is tricky. We're not going to use extrude. We're going to use revolve. Revolve is pretty powerful. All right. I want to use the middle plane. Let's use the right plane. Okay. And it's similar to extrude toolbar but it has a center line here in blue not the center line is this blue center line under datum or in a datum group select it and we're going to strike a vertical center line click once twice and middle click to leave it and there it is the center line now we're going to sketch on one side only okay one side only either this side or this side like I said before, I like to sketch on the left hand side because we read from left to right. Okay. I want to use line here. Now, it's hard to explain, but I want to go click from there and go up, go left, down, over, come back to the first point. Oh, it slips. All right. Let's click again. My mouse is not cooperating. All right, uh, just fill it in again. All right, middle click. All right, you should see a filled in color region of the sketch. If you don't see that, that means your sketch is broken. Okay, you must see this purple or pink color inside your sketch. If you don't see that, Control Z, undo, repeat again. So basically, is think of a razor blade. I want to place it right here and turn it around about this axis by 360 degrees, and that will clean up any excess inside the sketch. Okay, inside the sketch. Okay, the activity is going to happen inside the sketch. Click OK. Now, simulator, you see it. By default, is always add something to it. So we're going to click Remove Material. And by default, it changed to 360 degrees. Now, if I change that to something less, and you see the effects of it. Okay, see it goes around and cleans things up. Rotate the other side, and you see it. Here it comes, that one. And then done. Okay, type 360 again. Or you can drop it down, you see it. Okay, if you do a quarter, it's 90. A half, 180, three quarters, 270, a full revolution is 360 degrees. Got it? Any questions?
pretty easy, right? Just keep in mind what happens under the sketch, okay? That's the key if you, you know, you want to choose outside of sketch, you have a choice to flip it outside. In this case, we don't want to do that. If we do that, it's going to clear everything that we have modeled. Okay. And there it is. Okay. It trims off this access there. All right. Why? That's what Lego wants. Okay. We are rebuilding, reconstructing a Lego compatible cone shape in the lego classic kit that's it guys any questions it's been fun pause it replay it forward it skip it do what you need to do get this thing done turn it in i appreciate it this is tan lee founder of 3d cat masters i hope you enjoyed it